Welcome to Drinking Bro Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Sit back, relax, and grab a fucking drink. Are we on? Yeah. Oh, we're on. I got and we're tailgating. It. We're actually doing it. We're doing like we're things. supposed to do, right? The sports. <laughs> the oh, sports. Yeah, we're sports. under a tent. It did rain on us, just like a real tailgate would. Uh, it's raining. We've got food, grills, drinks, beverages, sports. Sports have started again. It's they a never real really, deal. They never really stopped, but that's okay. They're, they're really back in the swing of things, let's just say. But no, what did finish up is the Olympics. And do you know who won? China. USA. Oh, shit. USA. We won, you fucking dummy. Oh, I didn't you know. I didn't weren't paying attention. Um, like most people weren't paying attention, let's be honest, too. But because this is a tailgate, I went all in on food today because I'm super excited because you know that's what I'm all about. I don't give a fuck about these sports. <laughs> I just like the food. And so today, I've got a couple of tailgate hacks and swear up under the tent, dodging the rain, getting shocked in the face by microphones. Um, but today, we're going to do burgers, and we're going to do them burger easy style. <laughs> My producer's not his head, no. But I did just get shocked. Like, this thing just shocked the shit out of me. Um, at first, I thought it was Boston Joe just being a pussy. But, in fact, I did get shocked. In the yeah, face. see, shut the fuck up. <clears throat> yeah, you Maybe right. I am a pussy. But, uh, so, for today's tailgate hack, we were doing burgers. But not just any burgers. These are burgers that aren't going to need any ketchup, no mayonnaise, no mustard. So, it keeps our cooler clean and neat so we can put more beer in there. Do the flies so give it extra protein? Lots of beef. Right? Lots of beef. Mm, we love the and beef. And then we're going to make a little homemade queso, which is just going to be buttermilk, salsa from the from a jar, jar of mm. salsa, and whatever your favorite salsa is. You only need a little bit of it. Uh, wait, wait, Mexican wait. Before you do shredded it, though, cheese. what is your favorite salsa? I'm a Green Mountain Gringo guy. Oh, dude. I go to the Mexican Mart. The Mexican Mart. It's called, Mexican uh, Mart. It's called Compare Foods. And uh, they have it like pre dished. Uh, oh, some authentic. You ever authentic. have the Green Mountain Gringo salsa? That's, some, that's the good, good. That's not it sounds that like, like some hipster made that, and it's probably more than expensive than it should be. Yeah, well, that's what it sounds like. You got me. me there. <laughs> but then we've got some poblano peppers, and we have some jalapeno peppers. So, really super simple. What we're going to do is we're going to melt the queso on the grill, we're going to throw the burgers on the grill, and then we're going to put the poblano peppers and the jalapenos on the grill. Mm. And then when everything's melty and done, we're going to remove it from the heat, let it thicken up a little bit, and then we're just going to spoon that out onto the burger, put your buns on it, and you're ready to rock and roll. Make sure you Super toast those easy. buns, though. Makes it a little bit better. Oh, you like toasted buns? These are the potato buns as well, because I don't mm, do, I like toasted uh, buns. I like the potato buns. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you didn't ask me about my sports jersey today. It's a Duke lacrosse jersey. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, make sure you hammer that like button. Now, Duke lacrosse was just like O.J. Simpson acquitted. And um, if you actually look into it, I think rightfully so, but they still sort of have that sort of blemish over them. Now, they were probably Duke frat boy lacrosse players, so they probably sucked anyway as human beings. But I don't think they, you know, raped that that nice young woman who I believe was a prostitute. But again, we don't kink shame. But um, I'm more curious about how the fuck does one come up and get a Duke lacrosse jersey? Well, it's not important on how I got it. Um, but what is important is that Cuomo resigned today. He sure did. Uh, and this was the only thing that I had in my closet that resembles a sexual harassment jersey. Uh, Even though I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really team sexual harassment, but I just thought it was fitting. And I've never gotten to wear the Duke lacrosse jersey because I've never played lacrosse in my life. And somebody gave this to me from Duke, and I thought, shit, dude, now's now's as good a time as ever to break out the old Duke lacrosse jersey. This could have been worn while having sex with a prostitute. I don't know. But I did not wash it. And uh, have, have you had sex with your wife in that jersey? No. No, but I'm going to get on this grill. You should, honestly. I'm going to get on this grill because it's tailgate time, baby. So well, you take over for some sports shit. I'll take over for You do the sports, I'll do the cooking. Because that's how the sh show is supposed to go. No, you, I'll do the cooking is actually how it goes. So Duke is in Durham, North Carolina. For the people that don't know, know what else is in Durham, as Tansy starts flapping those burgers down on that grill there, is the Durham Bulls. And we just happen to be sitting on some Durham Bulls chairs from uh, old Durham Bulls Stadium, whatever the fuck it's called itself, which, again, is another thing that Tansy seems to have that I never know how the fuck he seems to has, have these things, but... I sports, dude. He sports. Um, so, you know, it's a good transition going from the Duke lacrosse players to um, O.J. Simpson's back in the news. Guy just never seems to go away. And um, he was, uh, I believe it was the Atlantic 
or The Athletic. I always get those two confused, way too close in names. But he had an interview, a little sit-down interview, and he said that he's afraid to go to L.A., because, I'm afraid to go to LA. Because he might be sitting down in the restaurant and the real killer will be sitting next to him. What a fucking asshole. Just shut the fuck up and go play golf. Stop tweeting about fantasy football. Just shut the fuck up. You got away with murder legitimately. You fucking decapitated someone for those of you don't forget. I love how people like make fun of Trump for being a narcissist and and he probably is. But Absolutely like, is. I think the fact that nobody's making fun of like we should all be making fun of all these idiots. But I mean especially OJ Simpson. I mean come on dude. How that guy cannot stay out of the media. Well it's funny you say Trump because it is kind of funny that OJ is allowed to tweet but Trump isn't. Oh there's mm. a lot of people that are allowed to tweet right now uh, but Trump isn't that I I mean I, I suppose, but of all people, O.J. Simpson. Now, I wonder if Aaron Hernandez got away with it, if he'd still be playing and bragging about uh, how awesome his life is. But instead, he took his own. And sometimes I wish O.J. would just take his own life, because at this point, oh, we don't... Oh, that is dark. We, I, why the that fuck do we need... super dark. We, we need less O.J. Simpsons we in this world. Less, less Bill Simpson. Cosby's in this world. And um, more Kevin Durant's. Because he's a gold medal recipient once again. I'm just kidding. Is he Kevin. the guy that threw his crotch in the Frenchman's face while slam dunking? No, that's Vince Carter. Oh, I like that That was guy. from a long time ago. Oh, was it really? Yeah, and that is uh, probably my favorite dunk of all time. Um, what gets underrated and overshadowed in that dunk, if you go back and watch the video and even see the picture, first of all, that guy was seven feet tall. Vince Carter is the greatest dunker of all time. Debate me on it, I dare you. He is the greatest dunker of all time. And he jumps over this dude, and if you look at Kevin Durant, I mean, sorry, Kevin Garnett, a young Kevin Garnett looking up like, holy fucking shit, I can't believe Carter is actually doing this shit. It is one of the most memorable dunks of all time, and especially his reaction after. I mean, if you could jump, I mean, you do try to jump. I couldn't slide a piece of paper onto you. But if you could jump over a seven-foot guy and yam it down on a, on a national stage on your way to a gold medal, I'd be fucking gassed up too. But the men's Olympic basketball team to Ross's uh, unfortunate demise uh, actually did win gold. And um, for all the drinking bros out there, I'm sure you all know, and you, you all saw how Ross bet against the United States, and I was kind of with him, to be honest. But um, I didn't make a silly bet that I had to dress as a clown. But I got to say, the optics of that alone, and I know everyone out there agrees with me, seeing Ross in full-on clown makeup was A+, plus, by the way. And I know that you went on the old uh, social medias and the Instagrams and Photoshopped a... Uh, a nice little eggplant into that big old <laughs> mouth that Ross Patterson has. And, yes. Uh, it I was quite the look. About it. And it was great having them, like, do these shows and, like, they had Lisa Ann on. And I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they prepped her and warned her ahead of time. I'm sure it wasn't a big surprise right when they start rolling. But it's just so funny. You can't really take him seriously when he's all dressed as a clown. And I guess uh, Jay Fire, as we have the flames on the grill over there, speaking of Jay Fire, did the makeup, um, which is, um, that's, that's Power Couple City right there when you're able to... Uh, have your wife do your, your wife do your makeup for you? Hey, will you go get me some water? Somebody give me some water so I can calm the grill the fuck down. Uh oh, too much J Fire over here. Sorry, I don't like my burgers well done. I'm more of a medium rare guy, so uh, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, though, as they say. Well, right? it's our first real tailgate since doing this show since December. Uh, we got the corn concert tonight. <laughs> you got the corn concert oh, tonight. True. I have the uh, Dead and Company concert next week. Thank you, Noel. Uh, that'll be a good time. Any of the uh, drinking bros in the uh, Raleigh area? Going to go watch John Mayer and the Dead? Why you come say hello? I'll be on the lawn. Thank and I will definitely be stoned, by the way. Just yeah, just want to let everyone thanks know Thanks for paying half of what I paid for that ticket originally. So How are you still paying for tickets? Well, because... Don't you know, like, everybody? But I don't ask for tickets. I didn't, I didn't pay for these so, corn. So I didn't humble, pay for so. these corn tickets. No, I don't like it when people shout ask out me for Dave, tickets. Shout out Dave Buskirk for getting me some... But Buster. yeah, I paid 160 and you gave me 80, and I consider myself lucky. So thank you. Yeah, cool. That was like such a backhanded. Cool. Like I, <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was some sarcasm. No, no sarcasm at all. No, the ticket. You know, I mean, I, I appreciate it's crazy. It. This crazy. is. I think we'll I be, didn't even know if I was going to be able to get rid of it. To tell you the truth, yeah, well, you know? if this is a dead show, I'll be there. And it's like my fourth time seeing Dead and Company, and my sixth or seventh time seeing John Mayer. Which, since we're talking about music here. Go over to Instagram and follow Drinking Bros Music that oh, that's new. yours truly started. And it's already getting some good traction. I've gotten, you know, some people saying that they, they dig it. They want to buy into it and, and keep the algorithm going and getting me 
you know, in the loop of things. And hopefully it leads to a uh, Drinking Bros Music YouTube channel and eventually a Drinking Bros Music podcast and that whole thing. So it'd be cool. People could like share their music videos and stuff yeah. on there. Yeah, absolutely. All the nice all the Drinking Bros and Broettes who are musicians or want to be musicians like myself, you know, send shit in. We'll post it out there and. And get your shit out. I mean, that's how you do it, right? I mean, it's, that's the, what the community aspect of Drinking Bros is all about. Now, we're tailgating for apparently the corn concert that Tansy's going to. But we, we could also say that we were tailgating for the Hall of Fame inductees um, in the NFL. You know, we had a couple other names like Edger and James. But we had some huge names like Calvin Johnson and Peyton Manning. Now, I've been on the record saying I don't like Peyton Manning. His aw shucks attitude and... Is all phony to me, and he took HGH, and he was overrated, to be honest. I mean, he was a great quarterback, but he wasn't even in the same stratosphere as, as my boy TB12, even though they got compared. Um, but I think they did a lot for the game, those two. The rivalry that they had was similar to Bird and Magic. They pushed each other, and without them, I don't know, maybe the NFL wouldn't be as big as it is today. But, um, of course, when Peyton Manning gets up there and he has an, his acceptance speech into the Football Hall of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame, he, of course, mentioned Tom Brady. Tom Brady was in the stands. They're good friends. And there was a mixture of cheers and boos when they showed old TB12, which, you know what? Good. I like when they boo TB12 because they hate us because they ain't us, even though he's a Tampa Bay Buck now, but we don't need to talk about that. But another thing was Calvin Johnson. Now, Calvin Johnson was played for the Detroit Lions, and like Barry Sanders, Retired a little bit too soon, which if you play for the Detroit Lions, who the fuck wants to stick around there? First of all, who wants to be in Detroit? Ain't that right, Mike the Cop? But he was a great player. But what he's doing now after his career, he started this um, marijuana business, and it's called Primitive. And he's been very vocal about how he didn't really like and appreciate how these team doctors in the NFL was so willing to jam these, you know, Percocets and Vikings down his throat while he was playing, and he wished that he could just medicate an easier way by smoking a joint after some of these games. And it's kind of what we talked about um, last week on the show um, about you know non-prescription drugs and drugs that are of the earth rather than man-made. And I th- it's called Primitive. It's spelt um, a little bit different. There's no e at the end. But honestly, I think um, I think what he's doing for the NFL players who are retiring as Tansy's trying to put out the flames. Tansy started the fire. Um, I think it's great. I think Calvin Johnson and other players, I think current players should come out and be a little bit more vocal um, and not be afraid of the feedback that they're going to get from the cunt NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, and kind of change the game and change the narrative with not only marijuana, which I think it's been changed anyway, but get Big Pharma the fuck out of the NFL and get them out of here shoving these pills down these players' throats. And I, I really appreciate what Calvin Johnson's doing. And, you know, listen to him talk about it. He's definitely passionate about it. And um, I think a lot of good things can come of that. Now, I know Tansy's not a big weed guy, but um, I think that even he can get behind having these NFL players not take these prescription drugs and really have the ability and the opportunity to medicate in their own way. And there's been a lot of NBA players who have been very vocal about this too. Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Steven Jackson, all these guys. They blaze up. And they used to blaze up before and after games. And I like how the NBA has this approach where they kind of turn a blind eye almost purposefully. They know that their guys are getting stoned and they're kind of okay with it. And they're not going to come out and just legalize it and come out and say that, you know, you can do whatever you want, but they're definitely going to sort of play ignorance to it, which is what I think the NFL should do now when you have guys like Le'Veon Bell getting suspended and, you know, LeGarrett Blunt and, you know, Josh Gordon is another one. You know, they're changing these guys' lives because they just want to smoke a little weed, which is so archaic and so old school and dumb. It's 2021 here. We're all we're all sparking up blunts next to Tansy and and talking about the good old days. And um, as I watch Noel right now, if you're on YouTube and you can see our producer Noel Hammer that like button, he's he's roasting up. He's he's risking it all right now, roasting up these. Is it Pueblano? How do you say those Poblano. peppers? Polano. Poblano. Poblano. I like that. Jalapens better. And that's exactly how you pronounce no, it's, jalapens. It's it's well, it's jalapenos. If, if, Ross was to tr- if Ross was to try to say jalapenos, he would call them jalapens because we all know Ross doesn't know how to fucking pronounce anything out there. No, I think it's going to be great. And um, this is what tailgating is all about, right? I mean, this is originally what we were supposed to do. And we've kind of worked our way around it in the meantime in the off season. But it's starting back up. Football will be starting back up real soon. It, like, 
not the preseason bullshit that nobody cares about. We got more games this year. It's a 17-game season instead yeah, of 16. How do, you feel, how do you feel about that? I mean, are they getting rid of the preseason games? Yeah, I think they took away one or two preseason God, games. Bless. I can't stand preseason games. There's just too many. I mean, I think you need one, maybe two. But who uh, am two's I? Two's reasonable. Two's reasonable, yeah. I think. You got too many injuries. I remember Mike Vick had a, he broke his leg in the... Um, and the preseason one, yeah, change well, like, the whole Because like, you don't know. Like, are you going all in on the preseason? Are you holding back? You got players that are trying to make the team, so they're going all in. But then you have other guys that are like, dude, I'm only playing for, like, you know, two snaps. So he's not going all the way. It's just too much chaos. Yeah, but that's tickets. And they don't sell out for these preseason games. But the NFL will do anything to make more money. Because, you know, the NFL doesn't have enough money. They're, um, for years, they were technically a nonprofit organization and didn't pay taxes. And another thing that they did was they would, um, in November, for uh, Veterans Month, they called it, for you know Veterans Day being in November, they used to sell like um, camouflage jerseys and all these right. things. And I think it was only 30% of those proceeds went to actual veterans, which as a veteran yourself, I hope you're outraged by that because that's some bullshit. That's pretty much taking advantage of veterans and taking advantage of what veterans have done and the name veterans alone and selling stuff in their honor and then profiting off it, which is the dirtiest type of shit you can do. Yeah, but how else are you going to pay these guys millions and millions of dollars and sign these millions and millions of dollar contracts if you don't have TV sales deals. coming in? TV deals and revenue. You got to have it. Uh, you can't Ticket pay for sales. it. So, I mean, if veterans are going to pay for it, I, oh, look, I'm down. I like the old camouflage shirt. But you think no thir- only 30% should it's go? Fine. I think it's fine. Really? Yeah, I think 30% is enough. I wanted a little more outrage on, out of you. You got to make some money on your own. I mean, they the have the plenty day, of money. They don't need money. Do you know the, the fucking TV deals I mean, they have you know with NBC how much money and Fox? Must, must take to run that organization? Well, do you know how much Roger Goodell makes? No. Way too much. <laughs> An NFL commissioner who has been wrong in pretty much everything he's ever tried to do shouldn't make the amount of money that he makes. He's a piece of shit through and through. Um, and as we know, Roger Goodell has had beef with Barstool and Dave Portnoy. But luckily enough, the um, the boys over at Barstool just uh, found a way to keep baseball relevant. And I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, they were talking about it today, uh, yesterday, I should say, on the wrap-up show. Filming this Tuesday, remember, guys. And... Um, they have this sort of picture-in-picture picture deal with baseball, which is great because baseball, as we know, is a dying sport, especially amongst you know younger viewers. And they're doing this sort of picture-in-picture picture thing where they have guys from Barstool doing live gambling feeds while these games are going on. And baseball needs all the help it can get. So I think that's a great idea um, for baseball to do that. But um, hey, hey, my digger, my digger, what's up? Oh. Because baseball's back in the news, so baby. This is a crazy story. So we have the mascot. And this mascot's name is Dinger? Dinger. Is that his name, Dinger? D-I-N-G-E-R. One, that's... Why would they name him that? But well, I, I don't care because that's not a racial term. I'll tell you exactly why they, um, they name it that. Because in Colorado, the air is thin. It is high elevation, and most of the people are high, too. Oh. Look at that. And there's a lot of home runs because when the air is thin, the ball travels. So you got a lot of dingers. Yeah, they used to have a, a humidor and the whole thing to make the balls a little bit heavier so they wouldn't travel through the thin air as easy. But that was the, that's the whole thing with, with Denver in baseball is, you know, they had the Broad Street Bombers back in the day, like Todd Helton, Larry Walker, and those guys. And there's a lot of home runs, or at least they used to be when they were actually pretty good and they had Nolan Arenado and Charlie Blackman back-to-back. But um, baseball finds a way to shoot themselves in the foot again. And just really, not only baseball, but the Denver, uh, the Colorado Rockies organization calling their fans racist and just jump into it so fucking fast. So the way it was presented to me, right, I was watching ESPN and they have sort of this muffled audio and a, you know, regular like you view baseball, the pitcher has his back to you and you can see the batter and you hear this muffled audio and they bleep it out and they don't allow you to hear it but they have in in closed captions and subtitles underneath n-word n-word and you hear at the end after they bleep it out the the er right so i i see that and i'm like oh shit someone's really fucking doing that's that's wild right i I take this face value (laughs) jokes on me that's my first mistake taking anything espn says at face value so turns out he wasn't 
dropping an N-word because you would think that you can see the fans around him. They're just sitting there eating their fucking popcorn. They're not looking around being like, what the fuck, bro? Right. And like, has the damage not been done? And that's another thing. Like, that's what we talk about on failure to stop so much. And my favorite quote of all time is perception is not reality. And everybody keeps treating it like perception is reality. You cannot look at all these things on face value and then run with it and run with these crazy narratives. And I don't understand why the news just keeps getting away with it and getting away with it because the damage has been done, right? Like the narrative has already been written. People already think that the N word was used. People already discussed it. People already threw out all the things that they wanted to say on social media. And now that they're coming back and saying, oh, no, he was yelling dinger Oops. before they ever knew. Oops. Right? Like, that's not your job, news. To me, that like, sounds guilty until stop proven innocent. promoting the perception of things and start going and doing some real fucking journalism, but none of them do. Mm. There's no real journalist. Like, how could you not think that you should go talk to that guy and say, like, yo, what the fuck? Mm. What was yeah. that about? Yeah. I mean, what if the dude had, like, some kind of crazy Tourette's? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I you guess. Don't I don't know if you that don't justifies know. it, but I guess that's a oh, decent I, point. So, so, like, if you have Tourette's and you cannot help but say things, if it comes out as the N-word, <laughs> even though you're not racist, and that could be the most embarrassing I don't know, that's in an life. interesting thing. I never thought of it I like mean, that, I suppose. But but the thing is, like you say, perception is not reality. I mean, the perception of it still should have been like, well, let's look at the fans around him. Now, I don't know about you, but if I hear someone, even if it's a black dude, just screaming the N-word at a, at a you know, base, a sporting event, I would turn and look and be like, huh, what's that guy's deal? There was no reaction. Now, let me also say, if you're a grown man... Going out of your way, I don't care how drunk you are at the fucking game. If you're a grown man going out of your way to yell and scream to get a Triceratops mascot's attention, you're an asshole already. But that's a whole different story. It sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> it sounds, yeah, I mean, like, sounds like a guy that's like, sports, look, at, look, it's a Triceratops over there. He's so hey, close. Dinger. He's so close. Dinger. <laughs> hey, dinger. So the guy's a loser anyway, but he's not a racist, I don't think at least as far as we know. And... I have a big problem with this because well, that sucks because the media really wants there to be a racist. Oh, well, that's they why they really were so quick. They want this guy to be racist. That's why they were so quick to. Do it. And again, like I was saying, it's that's guilty until proven innocent. And that's not how it's supposed to be in this country. And that guy, I mean, luckily, things move fast nowadays. He could have been dragged through the mud a little bit longer. You know, it took a couple days. It should have taken a couple minutes. But what the fuck do I know? But the fact that the Rockies organization came right out and he's like, he's banned for life. And once we find out who that is, that racist asshole, they didn't say asshole, sure. But in their statement, I'm, I'm uh, paraphrasing here, that they basically call and admit that they believe that this guy said this. And they admit that they think their fans are racist. Now, to me, that's a slap in the face to season ticket holders and anyone who is a Rockies fan that the organization itself just goes, yeah, we just assume guilt and assume that he was calling out a player, calling them the N word and just assume that our fans are racist, which is fucked up beyond belief. And if I'm a, a Rockies fan, I'm, I'm saying, you know, fuck you. I'm not fucking giving you my money anymore. I'm not going to these games. I'm not buying your jerseys. Fuck off. You just assume I'm racist. And the reason why, for many reasons, this bothers me. But one of the reasons in particular is because this has happened in Boston a few times now. Now, Tory Hunter, um, he longtime Minnesota Twins outfielder and eventually played for the Angels and the Detroit Tigers. I forget. If, I think it was when it was with the Tigers. I think it was the 2013 ALCS, which I was at game one, by the way. But he claimed that there were children at Fenway Park in Boston screaming the N-word to him and that the parents were cheering them on and applauding them. Now, listen, I'm from Boston. I've been to many games at Fenway Park. That is the most bullshit I've ever fucking heard. Now, if it was presented to me and that really fucking happened, then I would take the, all that back and apologize to Tory Hunter and kiss his fucking feet. But guess what? That shit didn't fucking happen, okay? That's bullshit. I've never been in a situation where anything... And I spent a lot of time at Fenway and in Boston. That's fucking bullshit. And he made that shit up. And the problem is the Red Sox and John Henry, who's a cunt, okay, come right out and they, they believe him. Oh, yeah, we wholeheartedly believe Tory Hunter, which means we believe our fans are racist. And that's a slap in the face to all Red Sox fans across America, especially in Boston. That's fucking bullshit. Then there was another instance with Adam Jones of the Baltimore Orioles claiming that he was called the N-word. Nobody heard it. And this was very, this was more recent. I want to say this was 2015, 2016. And nobody heard it. And they even went and they found people. So Adam Jones, I believe, was playing either center field or left field at the time. And they went to people who were at that game who were sitting either on the Green Monster and center field or, or the left field foul area. 
And they asked a bunch of fans, did you hear anything like this? They all say no. There's no phone evidence of it, which, as we know, if anything like that's going to happen, it's going to be fucking recorded, okay? No evidence at all. None whatsoever. I did not believe Adam Jones. But again, Sam Kennedy, who's a cunt, and John Henry, who's a cunt, come out and they wholeheartedly say, we believe Adam Jones, and once we find that fan, he's banned for life, and they do all this bullshit, and that really fucking pisses me off, because it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, and it's a slap in the face of the fans everywhere, and we should kind of fight back with it. Oh, look at this fucking juicy burger. We should kind of fight back and be like, listen, I'm not going to give you my fucking money and spend my time on your organization if you're just going to keep calling me a fucking racist. But I just got handed the burger, so I'm going to have to digress right here. Put one of those peppers on top of it. I'm I'm, going to get it going for him here in just a second. I wanted to poke in on your your racism thing. It's like, look, I've been born and raised in the South my whole life. Uh, But, you know, I've only maybe had like two people in my whole life come out and say the N-word to me, like in casual conversation, uh, where I felt like, dude, this guy's a racist. And guess what? They're not my friends anymore. And I think that's like the overwhelming kind of like... I mean, can you imagine if I use the N word in front of anybody out here, like you guys would have nothing to do with me. So I don't know. I, I don't think people are just out there willy nilly throwing the N word mm-hmm. at baseball games and Especially not having Boston. a clue that there's going to have some kind of crazy repercussions. So I don't know. That's where I stand on that. These are juicy. I'm definitely going to need some, some paper towels and napkins for these juicy burgers here. Can you go up there and grab a, a towel? Um, but yeah, and I just think that everyone wants to be real quick to judge these days when most of these people, as we know, Ain't that right, Cuomo? I'm living in these big fucking glass houses and throwing boulders. And go ahead and look into John Henry's um, history if uh, you feel so inclined. He is a cunt. And um, he owns the Boston Globe, which is a huge conflict of interest in Boston to own the biggest paper in town and also own the fucking baseball team. So if you think the Boston Globe, which is a fucking rag, okay, is any bit unbiased in their reporting of anything, especially when it comes to the Red Sox, it's fucking bullshit. In fact, this is going to be a Red Sox hating show because I'm now I'm fucking going. But Alex Verdugo, okay, was acquired by the Red Sox in a trade that involved Mookie Betts, who was my favorite player, who happens to be African-American too. And by the way, there's no African-Americans in the Red Sox front office, by the way. But, you know, they... um. They want to preach diversity, and they're really quick to put Black Lives Matter signs up on the monster, but they don't have any African Americans in their staff, and they haven't for a long time. But it's funny how that works. But anyway, they traded away Mookie Betts, prominent, awesome fucking player, just won a World Series with the Dodgers last year. And um, they they don't want to look into Alex Verdugo, but I did. And Alex Verdugo, not even allegedly, it's... um pretty much proven fact, by the way. He filmed his buddies beat the shit out of some underage girl and put it on Snapchat. And the Boston Globe did an an independent investigation into their newly acquired player, and um, they said, yeah, nothing to see here. Alex Verdugo is a piece of shit, and it's making me really not want to root for my hometown team, which is really sad, but it's only because of the ownership, and it's only because of the organization. It has nothing to really do with the players other than Verdugo, who's a fucking asshole. So... The Red Sox organization, just like the Colorado Rockies, to wants to call their players racist. I mean, sorry, their fans racist. And, you know, that sits with me not so well. And if I was a Rockies fan right now, I'd feel like I do as being a Red Sox fan. Call me a fucking racist after I've given you all my money and time. You can get fucked. So I think we really need to stop and everyone needs to take a step back when we think we hear something. Like Tansy always says, the perception is not always the reality. Oh, it appears as though this guy dropped an N-word. Let me go talk to him. Let me figure this out. Instead of, we got to cancel this motherfucker. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties with the burgers here. But but listen, when you tailgate, this is what happens, man. You got to fucking adjust and adapt. I'm just (laughs) glad to be cooking again, baby. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what you do second best. Oh, yeah. Ashley told me what you do best. Poor Ashley. But, um... That was my little soapbox rant about these fucking guys coming out so quickly to just assume racism. We should really assume that these people aren't bad people and then go from there. But They're good, I promise. People? <laughs> no, the uh, the food is good, I promise. When, the food once is the burgers good. are done, you're going to really enjoy it. I took, um, tell us more about these burgers as I bite into it again because it was super juicy. And then where'd these fucking fries come from? 
I didn't see you cook fries at all. They just appeared out of nowhere. I'm a little concerned. Uh, put them in the oven. <laughs> okay. That's well, a, we have the cheese That's a tailgate here. hack for you right there. <laughs> um, when is the first football game? Um, that's a good question. Well, I do know the first college football game. When is that? Is um, in September on the Labor Day weekend in, in good old Charlotte. You got a little something on your chin there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I missed. I missed his mouth this time. Um, and we will be there, just as a friendly reminder, and we will be tailgating just like this. And again, we, we hope to see lots of drinking bros and broettes there. And uh, come, come rage with us. Come get fucking all sauced up. And come to the, uh, the Georgia Go Dogs. That's going to be a tough show because uh, I'm probably going to be pretty, pretty intoxicated for that one. I love I'm an intoxicated be tailgating tansy. at the game. It's going to be. Oh, look, it's a blue tailed skink. They're everywhere. ADD right moment there. I, I just I like lizards. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a North Carolina um, immigrant, you could say. So every little fucking lizard thing I see, I'm like, oh, cool. They don't have that in Massachusetts. And uh, blue blue tailed skinks are one of those things. I hope the Duke lacrosse players did not rape that woman while wearing a jersey because these things are extremely hot. <laughs> you don't think that with 2020 uh, technology, they couldn't make jerseys cooler? Maybe. Like, rugby jerseys seem like they're a lot cooler than this. Well, that's an old jersey. It can't be that old. I mean, it's only, like, maybe 2015. And who plays lacrosse, anyway? Sorry. I don't uh, even know what that game is. Only, um... game on foot. Boo. Only frat boys play fucking lacrosse. <laughs> As Noel flips me off. Those are the people who Noel, failed... did you play? Did you play lacrosse? The you people did? who couldn't play baseball played lacrosse. One of the best high schools in the country. You, I, you Men's might be the first field hockey. I've ever met that actually plays lacrosse. It's men's field hockey. <laughs> men's field hockey? Hey, just... Yo, I would love to play you in some lacrosse anytime. Is Can it I... like Ultimate Frisbee with, with like hockey sticks? No, uh-huh. Hockey. On foot. It's, 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 it's field hockey, right? Oh, I thought it was... Uh, I thought lacrosse was the one with the net. They don't have the net in the... America's only real sport, so baseball, off. baseball is America's oh, pastime. It. And I wonder if um, someone in a, a lacrosse game like, said, like Bigger! <laughs> if he would get in big trouble. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. But yeah. Ross is the one with the net on the stick, correct? <laughs> okay. Yes, Tansy, that's the one. Well, I don't know, because now you guys are talking about being hockey, so I thought maybe that they had, like, no, I said field on the hockey. Well, I wouldn't know what field hockey is, either. No, you know what field hockey is? Regular hockey. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they don't have nets. Except they're on the field, so it's field hockey. <laughs> I've never seen it. No, they can't hear you. They don't have a mic, so. I can't <laughs> He's barely, mad. I can I'm getting Noel so mad at me. I'm just busting your balls. I'm sure lacrosse is fun for 20 minutes, but then you go find a real sport like baseball and you stop playing. <laughs> I think any sports could be better than basketball, in my opinion. I really just. I know Mike was hating on basketball, too. I don't enjoy it. I mean, some of the best athletes in the world play in the NBA. I hate to break it to what? you. What? Yeah, dude. I mean, let's be fucking honest here. You see no, these guys? Like, some of the best athletes in the world do the Tour de France or play rugby. The or... Tour de France? Yeah. You like the way I said that? Tour de France? Um, I mean... Best it, athlete, athletes on the planet play hockey. I mean, if you can do that with one ball, I mean, why is it that hard? Sorry, Lance Armstrong. Just kidding. Yeah, drugs. She had Crohn's? Oh, drugs. No, he was doping. Yeah, he would, um, big, big dope guy. Blood doping. Blood doping. What does that actually do? Do you know? What? What does it do if you dope your blood? How does that make it better? How does it, I don't know. How is that even performance enhancing? Well, I mean, I think because it, it gives you, like, it, 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 like, gets your blood to kind of be on par with what the uh, altitude is and things like that. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm, and not, I'm not Dan Holloway, so I don't know the answer to this. I know. You know, smart ass question. Dan fucking surprises me. Not really surprised me at this point, but he just knows like about fucking everything. Something will come up and he'll just be like, well, in this year, this happened. At th-. And I'm like, dude, how f-? he has so much knowledge. He's he's easily the smartest guy at drinking bros, right? I mean, oh, bro, next, uh, next to you. Hop Bob is pretty smart, isn't he? Hop Bob is, is, definitely an, is definitely an intelligent person. But I mean, Dan is just like on a whole nother level. I mean. Dare I say Rain Man? <laughs> I don't know, but we have a special guest that just kind of showed up. We're going to bring him on in here. He's just right off of the Appalachian Trail. Mm. Jimmy Bailey. Jimmy, come on up here and grab you a microphone. Actually, just sit in my spot. And, um, well, don't even sit in my spot. Let's see. Sit Where on his lap. 
Here, we'll just hit it. It's a tailgate. So we just bring people up. Here, I got a microphone for yeah, you. Yeah, this is our practice run for when we're really us. a tailgate. Squat right behind us. This is very unprofessional. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, get that guy a chair. Speaking of unprofessional, put that mic right up to your mouth, right up to your lips. I want to I hear the pucker of your lips. Oh, yeah. One more time. What's that? <laughs> so Jimmy, you like just go, you, you're uh, you're hiking the Appalachian Trail currently, and um, right. you got a uh, what happened? What happened? What got you off the trail and got you over here, tailgating with us? Uh, I got bit by a spider. No, that was not what happened. Happened. <laughs> my feet. I'm this fine is, with your feet. This is how it's happening, huh? I mean, I'm fine with it. I guess we didn't really plan. We just kind of went with it. It is what it is. No, <laughs> we were on the Appalachian Trail. My wife and I have been on the Appalachian Trail, Appalachian Trail since July 1st. Uh. We came off the trail a little bit tired, a little bit wired. Wanted to take a break, and uh, I had gotten bit by a brown recluse. Oh, did you really? On my spine. Yeah. Oh, shit. I've got a nasty uh, brown recluse bite on my back. Was going to be gone on Monday, but the uh, VA doc said, go ahead and uh, lay it back until, give it seven days so you finish these antibiotics. So you guys gonna do the you guys gonna do the whole thing? Cause your wife's got like a double lung no, transplant. So, Has yeah. anybody with a double lung transplant ever done the whole trail? I don't think so. I don't. I really don't think so. Um, so yeah. So my wife has a. She was born with cystic fibrosis. She's got a double lung transplant. She had a double lung transplant at Duke. Um, oh. Look at Duke. That. Yeah. Not, not Duke like Raleigh, like right? Duke, they're like, Duke sucks. I'm like, Duke gave my wife a lung transplant. Yeah, they're I like, think they think more oh, about Coach okay. K in the college. Um, <laughs> like, Duke's got a better mortality rate than UNC, so they got them beat on that as well. So. <laughs> that UNC but. Duke rivalry <laughs> around here, man. <laughs> more people die at UNC than they do at Duke, so Duke, Duke wins. <laughs> well, it's funny you bring that up because I was always under the impression that Duke was the more sort of pompous, preppy, you know, stupid sophisticated assholes, but then when I got here, everyone's like, nah, that's UNC, man. And I'm talking more about the college, not the hospitals. I'm sure all the hospitals are great, but... Yeah, UNC hospitals pay more than Duke. UNC steals nurses from Duke all the time. Pay Interesting. More. But anyway, Interesting. yeah, so we uh, went out there July 1st to hike, double lung transplant. We don't know that anybody's ever finished it, having had a double lung transplant. I'll finish you. I'm pretty sure most, a lot of people have, have gone out there and attempted sections, so we're just gonna, we're doing sections right now until... Like mid September, and then go from there. Figure out what we're gonna do, and might likely go out west and check out some of the uh, maybe the Grand Tetons. You ever go to the Grand Tetons? Is that your mom's nickname? Oh, but do you sports at all? <laughs> yeah, I used to sports, but uh, fuck sports, so I don't sports anymore. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. what was your favorite sport? Uh, football. Frankly, I was a Cowboys fan for the longest time. Ah, and, uh, I heard that all Cowboys fans are gay. Can you confirm? I might ha- I might be able to, but I'm still in the closet about it. Um, you know, uh, Cowboys, they, their first game of the season is uh, versus Tampa Bay, is it not? Well, that's why I actually live down in there now. I've actually been by old Tom's house. No, I'll touch my wiener on his gate. Are you sure their their preseason their first preseason game is what? Oh, about? preseason game. I was gonna say I don't think they're opening up the season. Usually they have the defending Super Bowl champion on Thursday night to open the season. But I would be lying if I told you exactly who they were playing right now. I'm, I'm too caught up. Home. I, I do have my phone, but <clears throat> the reason why I have my phone now is because I was going to ask how does one maintain and muster up all the energy to do the whole Appalachian Trail. I, I would say it would probably be a lot easier if you had some Kill Cliff Flaming Joe. Oh, Flaming yeah. Joe, Flaming Joe, how far can you go? We're going to hit that next next time. Is that the actual song? The whole, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we should song. sing the whole fucking it's an actual, song. It's an actual song. If they pay us extra, we'll do whatever the fuck they want. But also, we just love the fucking product, right? I mean, we drank all of it so fucking fast. We're going to have to go use our own promo code, which is drinking, bros. I mean, let's be honest. We already know that. Um, I know that you frequent in some of our shows, and I know that you listen every week. Do you know who invented Kill Cliff? Uh, Navy SEAL. A Navy fucking SEAL. See, this guy, P1 since day one, people, okay? <laughs> the Flaming Joe, which we reference, which will rev up your engines and allow you to uh, hike that whole Appalachian Trail. How many miles of the Appalachian Trail? Uh, over 2,300. So you're not doing the whole fucking thing then, right? I mean, no, 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 no. So just like a section? Yeah, a section. We're doing about uh, 200 miles of it. Have you done the Rockies? Is there like a Rocky That's, Mountain Trail? There is. That's the Continental Divide Trail. Have you done that yet? No. Is that next? Maybe. <laughs> I, um, I spent some time in the Rocky Mountains. It's a really cool place. But anyway, they got the Flaming Joe. They got the Mango Tango. The Orange Kush. And the defending Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Bucks quarterback, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr.'s favorite, the GOAT. Strawberry Days, of course, too, which I love strawberry. 
I know Tom Brady doesn't eat strawberries because of GMOs, and I know that with some TikTok videos going around of people putting strawberries in like diluted water, and then you could see all the bugs coming out of it. Yes. Which um, go check that out on uh, the used tubes. And since you're on YouTube anyway, watching us hammer that like button, and then this variety pack because variety is the spice of life. Now I I can't confirm or deny, but. If you were to pour some CBD recovery drink on that uh, brown recluse bite that you got there, I don't know if it'll help or not. I mean, I can't confirm nor deny this. But if you use the promo code Drinking Bros right now at KillCliff.com, is that drinking you, with a G? No, there's never a G. Oh, because we're bros, man. We don't. We fucking kind of cut shit short, just like Tansy's little T Rex arms as he's trying to get it onto that grill right there as we're watching on YouTube and you can hammer the like button once again. But if you used drinking bros, D R I N K I N no G B R O S, you get thirty percent off. You gotta go on there and get some of that flame and Joe so while you're, you know, doing that whole Appalachian trail, uh you know what? Maybe if you were drinking some kill cliff, you wouldn't have been bit by a fucking spider. Yeah, or maybe the spider would have bit me and then gotten so amped up that it would have just kept going and killed me. Yeah, and just like, oh, get steroided up. But anyway, go over if there now. If, go it's, to- if it's Flaming Joe's, what if the spider bit me and all of a sudden he was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm a fucking flaming spider. And then he ran off to San Francisco and you see No, that's my drink, the flamer a Joe. strap with shit around his nipples all of a sudden. <laughs> He's out there. Well, do you know what sucking the- Sucking um, a dick out in the Castro. Hey, you- boys, I bit a guy in the Appalachian Trail. They're like a bear. Now I'm all flamed up. Where's Joe Rogan at? Fuck him. No, I love Joe Rogan. Handful, I would never handful. denigrate Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you know what the flaming Joe flavor is? <clears throat> flaming? <laughs> it's pineapple and jalapenos, like we have right here in front Jalapenos. of us. Oh, I thought it was pronounced jalapenos, no? Jalapenos. Jalapenos. Yeah. There you go. A Where are you from? Um, good old Johnston County, North Carolina. Oh, born and raised. Choco, baby. Anyway, go now. Right now. Pause Pause the podcast. Or even, you know, I Is guess Joe you could Rogan do the same even time. sponsored by Kill Cliff? Uh, yeah. He yeah, has his own fucking drink. He has his drink. own drink. That I mean, are, you a, show. are you new? The show. Of course. No, I've been around. Been around the world. And round, round, get around. around. I get around. Go to killcliff.com and try to make it a song, even though I couldn't do it because I'm a fucking idiot. Use the promo code Drinking Bros. Get 30% off. Order a shirt. I think we got to get you a shirt because maybe if you actually have the proper attire on, like a uh, Kill Cliff shirt, that you can get uh, 30% off those on using the promo the, code. Those shirts are dope ass. They are. Fu- yeah, this one I saw Dan wearing where it's like a big cat with like laser beam eyes, like wrecking a whole fucking city. Oh, that's which pretty is pretty cool. fucking rad, right? And you can get 30% off if you use promo it's code rad Drinking. It's not a shirt, and it's some, something you would see and think. Yeah, they can't put that on a shirt. Oh, Boys, but Kill Cliff does. You know, it's it's August, and it's we're hot. in North Carolina. Yeah, we're sweating and, our balls uh, off, by the way. You know, it rained, and it was had that kind of like a nice, cool, like kind of like a nice air coming mm-hmm, through. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as the rain left, dude, it is like 150% humidity. We're yeah. sweating all over the place. I promise these tailgates are going to get better as tailgating season goes on. But, man, I, working this microphone and working a grill, I'm sweating my balls off. And I can only imagine how sweaty and shitty you must have been on the Appalachian Trail all summer. Oh, you guys terrible. Been and we put you in the sun back there, too, the, which is great. <laughs> yeah, we put, put you right back there in the sun. <laughs> uh, but you know, why, you know what? I, the reason why I could never do the Appalachian Trail because you're a pussy. Because I'd be too far away from my ghost bed. Oh, should have known. <laughs> should have known, baby. That's what you you're going to do when you're all done is lay in your ghost bed for Because I'm laying days. down there on my thermo rest, and I'm like, this thing sucks. Yeah. You got to upgrade, need- bro. What are you Dude, doing? Dude, does, uh, ghost bed need- does, go- does ghost bed have like a hiking version of their... Ooh, if they did, I'd, I'd rock that thing out there. <laughs> I'd rock the version of a bed. bed yeah, I would. I, they could sponsor me to do the Appalachian Trail if they provided me a bed at every... I'd climb into other people's tents. What do they call Like a sag? What, what's a... Like in cycling, your braking area, that's called a sag. What's it called on the Appalachian Trail? What, to sleep? Yeah. Camp? Shelter? A camp? Shelter? Yeah. Camp, camp or shelter. <laughs> um, do they have ghost beds in the shelters at all? They don't. They should. It's fucking gay. They should have uh, kill clips, too, by the way. Brown, uh, brown recluse and wood. <laughs> oh, and trash, because a bunch of the... Uh, Probably a bunch of NBA fans that go out there and leave all their trash in the woods, like pieces of shit. Do you see a lot of trash on the Appalachian Trail? Un- unfortunately, there is a lot of trash. Dude, the that's crazy because you think anybody on the Appalachian Trail is probably like one with nature. You would think so, but so what you see that a lot is the uh, lazy the, the shelter points, or like the trailheads, where most people I'll call them civilians because that's what I just call anybody who's not in the inn. But you see them come out and they'll they'll just come out there to have a good time. And what you'll see is a bunch of fucking, you'll see a bunch of uh, Red Bull, and you'll see a bunch of that bullshit where those types of people, yeah. they'll drink Fuck their Red, Red Bull, Bull, drink Kill Cliff. And, uh, yeah, they'll propel energy, and they get all amped up, and, 
Jack Stream, baby. Well, Fiji yeah. water. Yeah. So then they just throw it under the ground, throw it in the fire. There's trash everywhere. It's pretty disgusting. Do they have anybody that hikes the trail to clean up trash? Like, is there like an organization that? <laughs> yeah. So the Appalachian Trail Conservatory. Okay. They have people that are actually responsible for each different part of the, sh- the uh, trail. Uh, what's the camp again? The uh, Rangers Mountain Face in North Georgia. North Face. Camp? No, camp something. <laughs> the M. It's anyway, the North Face. I met by this the way. lady. Her name is Diane. I met her up there. She's out there. This woman's like seventy years old, hacking through woods, camp out the ground, Something like Camp Camp Morant, Camp Morris, Camp titty something caca. or another. Okay. Anyway, I'll, so she I'll took a bunch of tra- bunch of trash that she could tell was like trash that these guys that are going through Ranger School had left behind. Oh, no shit! Like it was bad. And I was asking her like, "What have you done?" She's like, "Well." They'll have these kind of like open kind of forum discussions to talk about the impact that the camp is having on the trail. And this woman, like a gangster, she said, I went in there and I collected up trash and I showed it to whoever their like NCO was in charge, the NCO I see, and, and brought it up to him. And he's like, no, 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 ma'am, ma'am, ma'am I'll, t- I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. She's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. She fucking said she goes up there and she just dumped out a full bag of trash. And it was like cut up five fifty cord, and it wasn't like oh, dude. Orange. Like I can only imagine because uh, you know, funny story is uh, I was going through uh, one, a small unit tactics phase, and uh, you know they would load us down with tons of ammo. Oh, sure. And when you get off your infill platform, sometimes you would take contact, and so we would always say like, look, if we get contact when we infill, you dump as much of that ammo. As you can. So, like, we'd be pulling the trigger on these blanks, ta, 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 and then breaking links of like 200 rounds and, and just, just tossing them, them <laughs> in the woods so that we didn't have to carry it for the next six or seven days. <laughs> and you would just leave like belts of ammunition out there. Uh, and then one guy, because you weren't allowed to eat, or if you got caught eating, I mean, there's a lot of rules out there, but one ju- one of the guys on our team, you know, left a piece of MRE trash behind. And so the instructor made us all pull out our MREs and he hooked explosives up underneath all of our meal ready to eat bags and he blew them up out in the middle of the woods. And just, I mean, shit, fragments of cardboard, everything just went everywhere. I don't, I don't think we clean that up at all. So you're a fucking litter bug. Uh, no, I'm sure somebody goes out there and cleans that. It's an mm. army base. So let me just say, though, you were right. The um, defending Super Bowl champions are opening up with the low-life Dallas Cowboys. Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, Dak Prescott, who I think he's pretty good. I know Ross was hating on him, but Ross also hates on Baker Mayfield, who I kind of like. You know, he, I don't know if you saw his injury last year, real bad ankle injury, really kind of fucked up. And he tried to, like, jam it back into place after wow. he broke it. But while he was laid up for that long... After his surgery, I bet he wishes he was on a ghost bed. He does. Mm-hmm. And Ghost Bed's been a loyal sponsor of uh, the Drinker Bros for the last five years. Mm-hmm. L- absolutely love them. Uh, my favorite part is that they're made in the good old USA. USA. It's the first time we've ever hit that on No, we do that all the time, no? Yeah, but we always like want, like, I'm going USA. USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always fuck that up. But USA. Every mattress has a 20 year warranty, and you can try it out for 101 nights, not 99, not 98, but 101. If you don't like it, you can send it back. No hard feelings. But you won't. You won't. One of our favorite parts about Ghost Bed is that each mattress comes with cooling technology, which shit I need today because I'm sweating through this rape jersey. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, no, but it has guilty, a cooling technology in it so that you can get hot at night. Uh, you can stay hard while, uh, so you don't get hot at night. You can stay hard while staying cool, baby. Cool is the other uh, side of the And pillow. if you're in North Carolina right now, this 116% humidity at least, you need to stay cool. So uh, that cooling technology will be a lifesaver. Mm. Ghost Bed also offers bundles so that you can get everything you need you don't even really have to uh, think about it just choose from their four mattresses and then pick your bundle so whether you just need a mattress a frame or uh, whatever it is that you need you can bundle it all up. Right now, GhostBed is offering a flash sale of 40% off GhostBed bundles where you get mattress and adjustable base or 30% off of everything if you use that code Drinking Bros. Drinkin at GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Mattresses are like $35 a month. Who doesn't have an extra $35 a month laying around? Uh, that's if you have mediocre oh, you credit. Bitch. Uh, if you hit zero down, 0% financing, um, go check it out. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking, drinking bros. bros. Made in the USA. 30, 30% off mattress and two pillows or 40% off mattress and adjustable, uh, adjustable base. Dude, again, 40% off. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you can't like, beat that. You can't beat it. So. Yeah, I do kind of want to beat you off. because you're wearing fucking... F- Fake Crocs. They're actually real Crocs. They're not. It says it's emoji a, on it. Uh, it's a different language. It says, uh, that's what Croc is in uh, I thought you were fucking bragging about how fucking you rich and you're wearing fucking knockoff Crocs. They're First not, of all, who wears Crocs. Crocs anyway? What a Croc. Uh, Noel's not wearing them. So I can say whatever I want. Fucking the kids these days. 
I go. To I the, don't wear pajamas on an airplane. Listen, we already talked about this. They're fucking joggers, first of all. Okay, don't let me get my joggers. my my That's dinger like, over here. Joggers to kick are like your ass. pajamas of the north. Yeah. Well, uh, the north we've got, remembers. We've got we got what's our next show coming up next week? We've got uh, so this week we've we've talked all about jumping right into the sports. We've got one more down week and then sports really kicks off. Mm. I think we got like a conspiracy episode coming up next. Maybe I'll talk about some sports conspiracies. That's a tease, and then and going on into the season, we're actually going to be at games tailgating with all you knuckleheads out there. So be reaching out to us. Keep calling us. Tell us where we need Don't, to be. Wait, wait, wait a second. Don't deflect your fucking Crocs. Because I wanted to say that the Crocs thing, I really, I need to get you guys' opinion on it because I don't understand it. Because when Crocs first came out, they were like mocked and looked at as like fucking stupid looking. Now everyone's fucking wearing them. Would you be in if they were called cocks? Would you be like, oh, no, they yeah. Would, I wouldn't be in. They'd be in me. Face. He's been in the woods for a long time. You can I don't tell know, he right? hasn't been laid because, I mean, Well, he's been with his wife, right? Dicks. Do you guys have sex on the trail? No, you don't want to get that. You don't want that. Mm-mm. Really? What? What's the point of doing it then if you're not going to do it in the woods? You ever been that dirty? I've never slept outside. Well, wait, I take that back. I'm a dirty never. boy. Have I fucked outside? Yes. But have I slept outside? No. And I really, quite frankly, have no need to Could sleep outside. Could you imagine having sex right now being this sweaty? This soggy. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, my when balls, I have sex, my balls I get are pretty sweaty. Sitting in a pool of sweat right now. Ooh, think about that visual, right? Yes. Now. Wait, are you guys wrapping this up or what? You could r- rinse I'll, them out. Listen, we always wrap it up because we practice safe. We're gonna sex wrap it up. Here. I gotta finish this beer first, real quick. And oh. uh, you want some French fries? Is that why Are you hungry back there? Who me? And by the way, these French fries dipped in this uh, this queso dip that I made. Queso. Oh it. my god. Queso. Uh, just let it be known that the. Woman who accused all of the Duke uh, players, mm-hmm. she was found to have been a complete. She was a croc. They found more than one trace of DNA and semen in her vagina that night, and none of it was related to the Duke lacrosse players. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Some, <laughs> a, someone got sloppy seconds. Wasn't she a prostitute? Yes. yes. Yeah, of course. She wasn't a prostitute. I think she, she was, was a, a, stri- a stripper who she was also fucked. Girl. Which, Horror. hey, well, no, by the way, working girl. I'm one who's who's in the camp that. Prostitution should be legalized, by the way. It shouldn't be called should, prostitution. You should be able to do what the fuck you want to do. Yeah, with I mean, it's an exchange of funds over an act. I mean, we're all adults here. If everyone's consenting and everyone's of age, I have no problem with it. We already sell liquids. Right? I mean, I've never paid for sex. Have you ever paid for sex? Either of you, young no, gentlemen. No, of course not. I have morals and ethics. Have you, have you bought bottled water? That's like paying for rape. Bottled water is like basically paying for rape. Is that too far? I'm just not no. quite sure how that equates, but yeah, tell free. me how you can get it for free. Otherwise, you just get raped. <laughs> just <laughs> wait for it to oh, rain oh, and look Netflix up at the sky and bleh. here, give me ninety nine cents for this bottle of water. Well, you're check. paying for the bottle, right? I mean, sure, you could go litter. find water in the fucking lake, but to have it in a bottle. How hard is it to find water on the Appalachian Trail? On the Appalachian Trail, it's not difficult at all. Usually, there's water about every mile. Does he say water weird? No. Like, is there like a hose? I think no. You get it out of a creek. So you oh, use okay. um, a hose you've seen, in the fucking woods. You even it's mentioned you've hose. got those those UV stirrers where you can. Mm-hmm. So on the trail, you use it's called a Sawyer. It's just a squeeze through charcoal filter that that uh, pretty much sanitizes any water you put out there. So we can we've drink and drank, we've drinking drink and drank, we've uh, drink drank sourced, drunk. I'll say water out of a mud puddle. Right into a bottle and <laughs> my ass right now is a mud puddle. <laughs> oh my god! Oh god, mine's a <laughs> so is mine. It some is just serious swass so going on. Brutally here. hot out here, but um, for the, as far as the food goes, that was really good. It it's was really easy, and it's so easy to pack in and pack out. I mean, literally, you don't have to worry about the ketchup, the mustard, the mayonnaise, the relish, the pickles. You're really going to pre-mix uh, some Mexican cheese, uh, put some buttermilk in there, mm. and uh, half a stick of butter. Wrap it up, put it in the cooler, put your hamburger patties in the cooler pre-made, cut up your uh, poblanos and your jalapenos, Jalapens. put those in there, and then all you're going to do is just throw all that on the grill all at the same time. It comes off all at the same time. Chef Joe Puhok. It's super Chef easy. Joe Puhok would be proud. That is another huge blue-tailed skink. I'm sorry. They're I'm all over the place. I know. It's fucking cool. I like them. I like lizards. But Chef Joe Puhok, shout out to Chef Poo- Joe Puhok out there. I know he's listening and watching him with that like button on you. How cool would it be if like a Very blue proud. a blue tail skink was like crawled out the, my uh, shorts? Uh, like that's what they changed the Washington Redskins to. Is like ah. Well, skinks. speaking of that, we might as well talk about how the uh, the Cleveland Indians changed their name to the Guardians. Oh, shut the, that the Guardians. Yeah, and I believe I heard that there was a cease and desist. Cease and desist, or right? Is that how you say it? Yeah. If you say it fast enough, it doesn't really matter. Cease and desist. By Disney, because it looked too much like uh, the Angels in the Outfield 
like logo. But I mean, yeah. Guardians. What Jeez. the fuck does that even mean? That's another thing. I was on my soapbox. So we're just gonna forget about the Indians altogether. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. There's no Indians on Land of Lakes. Like, there's no somebody, Indians. Somebody said to me about Land of Lakes. They said, look. They took the Indian off and kept the land. That's right. <laughs> typical white people. Yeah, typical. Yeah. Got rid of the Indian and still kept that's the what, land. That's what we need to understand. It, you know, I'll get back on my it's soapbox It's almost like for we're trying to forget history so that it could repeat itself. That, the, yeah. Listen, they didn't ben name. No longer our uncle. They didn't name the Cleveland Indians the Indians to poke fun at Native Americans. They did it to honor the Native Americans. It's like Aunt Jemima. That's a real person. Was she? Yeah. Yeah, she was a real person that worked her ass off and traveled. Hmm. For this company, she was an employee and was, was famous traveling around with this syrup and pancakes and all that shit in America. And, and really, as somebody, you know, in that time going around and, and trying to show people, you know, being more inspiring of uh, the black community than a fucking NBA player. <laughs> like like, like LeBron back. James. Fuck, LeBron Fuck James. you, LeBron James, you cunt. Oh, by the way, is that a rooster crowing in the background? No, it's yeah. not a dick. Well, it's actually not a rooster. It's actually one of our hens that identifies as a rooster. Because, <laughs> no, I swear to God. <laughs> because there's God, no rooster. So, so it t- it takes the role of the rooster for the whole hen house. And oh, so it we, crows. So we, no, I'm not kidding. That's the that's the kidding it, button. So it fertilizes uh, all But I'm, I'm really not kidding. It is a hen. It is a, a, a she lays egg. But she crows like a fucking rooster all day because there's That's a no rooster badass there. bitch right there. She so, can do it all. So once she identified as a rooster, was she able to fertilize eggs? She fertilizes her own eggs, right? Yeah, because uh, you don't need a male rooster. So does she do the fucking? How do eggs work? I hope that picks up on the mics, and they don't it fuck. probably won't. But you can hear. They don't fuck. fuck it all day. Well, like, you can tell when she's laying because she's so fucking obnoxious, and she usually does it about 8 in the morning, and, I mean, it's just oh. like, oh, yeah. I was going to say, it sounds oh. like you when you're having sex, right? Oh, like get this thing out of my body. <laughs> Seriously, I, I hope we can hear that. because <laughs> Now I'm talking to her. Yeah, she's, uh, she's saying, Tansy, shut the fuck up like they told you oh, in Nancy, Dallas. That she's mad thing. at me because I uh, killed three of them uh, and ate them because they had stopped laying eggs. But then I found out that it's brooding season and that they all kind of stopped laying eggs for like... A couple of weeks during this time, you know, I felt bad at first, but then I eat fucking chickens all they the time. They felt like they were so living in China. So we just ate a cow. I just uh, there there was a cow down by the creek a little while ago. Uh, I was wonder if he's going to come rolling through here. I just get upset when they come up here by the car because when those cows brush up against the cow, they uh, it like car. fuck your suspension all up and everything. You said one of those cows bends the frame. The yeah. Cow. yeah, he meant he meant car. I I, I picked drinking. up what he was. No, the though. cow will come up here and rub up against the car. You said cow. Against the cow. <laughs> Whatever. Listen, if we do it's this any longer, shit. if we do this any longer, I'm going to start rubbing up against you. So, right, uh, well, let's wrap this thing up. This to... is Boston Joe, Eric it's Tanzi, Tailgate Legend Show, wow. Drinking Bro Sports. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.